A small bit about me, my name is Pollock, uh, Irish, that's why it's yeah, hard to pronounce. I'm going to show a few code snippets, a few screenshots. They're all in this repo. Um, so if anyone is interested, that's where it is. I will show this QR code again at the end in case anyone gets interested. Um, the company I work for is Zebia. We're a data and AI consultancy based in the Netherlands, but with offices around the world, including here in Toronto. Um, I'm an analytics engineer. One of the things this means is that I spend a lot of time trying to orchestrate DBT from Airflow. I've seen a lot of ways to not do this. Um, so I have a lot of opinions on how you should do this. And the fact that I have the microphone means that I get to tell you all about them, which is awesome. So what is DBT for the few people that, that didn't know it, some of the key points? It's essentially a way of creating a pipeline, but only writing SQL. And that's uh, only in air quotes because there's a lot of YAML involved as well, but everyone loves YAML, so that's good. So what is an analytics engineer? So this is something of a job title that is really being caught by DBT. The screenshot on the right is from them. This is, they say, the tasks of your stereotypical analytics engineer. The only thing that's really important for us here is the top one. So provide clean data. This means you need to do some scheduling, preferably some orchestration. So in terms of DBT, there is a DBT cloud you might have heard that has inbuilt scheduler. Uh, you can trigger that via API call from Airflow or your other orchestrator of choice. I'm going to focus on DBT core. This is the pure open source package. It does not come with a scheduler. You need to figure this out yourself, uh, which is where the fun starts. So. Just like Airflow, DBT has a DAG. This is what their DAG looks like on the right. I created a very simple uh, DBT project. Uh, the lack of colors is depressing. Uh, colors would be nice. On the left, you can see my directory tree. We're going to focus on the models. So what DBT says, I should build this in layers. So I should start with my staging layer, then I will have intermediates, and then I will have my marts. Marts are what I expose to my end users. They are my data products. They are highly flexible, highly clean, high quality. Uh, so you see we have two here on the very right of the, the DAG. In the middle, we have some intermediates. This is where we do some of the cleaning. We build, bring stuff together. We add some business logic. We do a lot of joins, which is why you see multiple ones coming in. And then on the very left, you have the staging models. This is going to be the focus of what we do here for the next uh, 17 or 18 minutes. Staging is where you have a lot happening. So what DBT says is I should split my staging directory into further directories. So we can see them here. Google Ads, Google Analytics, and Stripe. So these are my sources. So I have a number of models coming in from, let's say, Google Ads, Google Analytics. They all end up in a dedicated subdirectory. So this is going to be key to what we do later on. So what is our task as analytics engineers? We need to translate this DBT DAG into an Airflow DAG. So how do you do this? Mm, it's a little like Google Translate. Sometimes you get a very literal translation, and you're a native speaker, and you know, hey, that don't, that don't make sense. Uh, don't do that. Uh, sometimes you get a recommended tra translate, and then you know, oh, someone's behind this, uh, which is good, because other people are always right, and there's safety in the crowd. But yeah, let's see where we go. So. The first option, what a lot of people do, is equality. Essentially, I want my Airflow DAG to look like my DBT DAG. So the people outside the door uh, won't like this, but I did not use Astronomer's Cosmos for this. I use a DBT Airflow factory. This comes from a company called Get In Data. Uh, it's just easier for me to set up. Um, so if you look at the, the DAG here, this is really similar to the DBT DAG. I have my two marts towards the right. I have my three intermediate models, and then I have a big bunch of staging models, and then I have a start and end empty operators just to keep it nice and clean. So this is very familiar, and it's nice. It has some advantages. So again, it's, it's very familiar. One of the nice things, if one of the DBT models fails because of something's wrong with my SQL, that's all that fails. And when I retry, I just retry the exact thing that failed. 
I don't have to retry anything else. Um, well, again, Cosmos does this, DBT Airflow Factory does this. I don't need to manage this. Some people write their own thing to do this, parse your manifest. Yeah, no, outsource it, uh, give it to someone else. Uh, open source is great for this. The downsides, so where to start? So, if you have a big DBT project and you have hundreds of DBT models, not the 15 or 16 that I showed, you have significant startup and teardown times overall. Uh, this isn't good, this doesn't scale well. Uh, if you need this to be finished quickly, you have SLAs, you're going to run into issues. Another thing is the resource usage of this. You need a new pod for every single one of those airflow tasks. That's a lot of worker slots to be consumed. And yes, you can increase your concurrency, but maybe that has downsides from some of your other DAGs. Maybe some other people don't want that. Maybe your resources aren't up to that, depending on your setup. One of the things that I need to correct here is unable to use DBT select flag. I got corrected by astronomer outside the door earlier. This is now supported by Cosmos, so I know what I'm doing tomorrow uh, because I need to look into this. Another thing, because you're parsing DBT's manifest, what if DBT update and they don't keep the same JSON schema for your manifest? You now have to go and wait for your open source package to update. So you have a small bit of coupling there, which is maybe, maybe something you don't want. So let's go in the completely opposite direction. Let's just put one task and do everything. Uh, so when I see companies take this approach, I feel like poor Pablo here. Someone clicks run and you put your hands behind your back, you get a cup of coffee. Um, depending on where you are, you might come back the following day um, because this thing is going to take time and you only know if it failed or succeeded at the very end. And this sucks. Um, so yes, super simple. Resources, oh yeah, we only have one startup and one teardown. We're doing great. Uh, completely resilient to any DBT changes. So uh, really scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Downsides, I have any DBT model fail, my entire task fails, and I don't know this until the end. Uh, I then go to do a retry, I need to retry my entire project. If that's multiple hours, the cost of this, both in financial cost and in terms of the end users being delayed, really not nice. Another one, you have downstream users of your marts. If I have finance users, depending on finance marts, and marketing users, depending on marketing marts, I only have one task. They can't differentiate. So I could have my finance mart fail, but my marketing downstream use case is also blocked. So your blast radius is quite high. So can we do something slightly better? Mm, let's see where we go. So one thing that gets suggested is take each of those layers, so staging, intermediate, and marts, do something like this, build them separately. So this kind of works because we have our mart here, super sophisticated, super high quality, ready to add, do anything that's asked of them. Yeah, that's nice. Then you have your intermediate layer, we're putting stuff together, there's a few more intermediates than marts. Yeah, this is okay. But then we still have this issue with staging. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the focus of this talk. We have a lot of models going on in staging. This is what DBT recommends. We have a bit of a mess of minions here, trying to put all of them in one task. We suffer from a lot of the same downsides as the previous slide. Uh, so I think we need to do slightly better for staging. So one of the things that we need to do as well is pay attention to DBT best practices, because this is going to give us some of the reference points. So I have some stuff that I've taken directly from their documentation. So staging models, one-to-one -one relation to sources. You have a new source, you end up with a new staging model. That's a lot of staging models once you start growing at scale and you have new sources coming in. One of the things that I mentioned at the start, and you can see here in the directory tree directly from DBT's docs as well, we create a subdirectory within staging for each of our source providers. So you can see, for example, we have Stripe here, we have Payments. If you add another one, for example, refunds or customers, that lives in the same subdirectory. DBT also says to run subsections of your DAG. 
don't do a global DBT build, which was one of the things that we did earlier, and poor Pablo was not, not happy. So what does the result of all this mean for how we can tackle our staging issue? Essentially, each subdirectory in DBT staging there is entirely self-contained. It's fully independent. So everything in my Stripe subdirectory, that's all it needs. I can run Stripe on its own. I can have massive issues elsewhere in my DBT projects, completely unaffected. Same with Jaffle Shop. I can run Jaffle Shop on its own. Everything comes from within that. We can take advantage of this. So we can create dynamic tasks. So I'm going to show a code snippet on the next slide for anyone wondering. Well, essentially, a dynamic task, you run a task in Airflow, it returns an XCOM. That XCOM is a list. You can then take that list and iterate over it to create any number of subsequent tasks that all run in parallel. So we can see here, we now have staging inside in a task group, because I like task groups. So the first one is the assemble dbt staging, commands, cut off. Uh, this returns a list. So we'll, we'll see what's inside in that task in a minute. You can see that the second one here, DET build staging, and then in the square brackets, we have three. This denotes that we have three different tasks, fully individual and independent, all running in parallel. The new UI is quite nice for this, so you can see it at the, the bottom half of this. You have your three tasks. You can click on any of them. You can view the logs for all of them. One of the downsides, and I'll get to this in a moment, you only have a map index for this, 0, 1, and 2. Uh, not very visual. Uh, so if I have one that's my stripe, yeah, I'm going to need to click on these at random, look at the logs, and figure out which one is stripe. Uh, kind of sucks. Uh, I only have three here, but try this with uh, over 100, and yeah, you'll have fun. So how do we actually do this? So uh, hopefully the screen picks up. Um, so maybe not. Uh, maybe I can talk through the code. Uh, maybe not. So I <laughs> OK, I'll talk through it. So essentially, we have a task group for our staging layer, which is the with statement. You may see, you may not see, uh, Schrodinger's presentation. So the first one, we run a Python script. The Python script uses dbt's native commands to essentially return the past to all of my staging models. I can then run a little Python snippet to extract the paths and get a distinct number of paths. So that's the bottom half of the screen, which is maybe a bit small. Um, so this is what it does. So again, this is quite nice. Um, we'll come to some of this in a moment. At the top then, you can see we have a second task. This task expands. So we have the dot partial and we have the dot expand method used here. It simply reads in the XCOM from the previous task. And then this is how we get our dynamic task mapping. So I'm using it here. Lots of people use this for files. So for example, you look in an S3 bucket, you see how many files are there. And then for each file, you do a subsequent downstream task. But this is super generic implementation, which is really nice. So you can do whatever you want with this. So anyone who has any use case for dynamic tasks, you can use the partial and dot expand if we ever get to see them again. And you can use that for any of the other operators. So this isn't anything specific to the, the Zebia plugin we have, uh, which is just how I run DBT everywhere. Um, so yeah, this is quite nice if everyone can see it. Um, OK, let's move on. OK, the screen, screen obviously did not like code. Uh, it must have been something wrong. I, I thought it was good, but maybe I can get some feedback on that after. So what are some of the advantages for this? And obviously, I'm on stage, so I'm super biased. So uh, you can correct me afterwards. So each source system has a dedicated task. This is nice. This means if Stripe mess up or if there's an API outage, only Stripe is affected. My Google Ads, my Google Analytics, completely unaffected. Retries, yes, if I have multiple models in any of my directories, then I may need to retry models that have already succeeded. But I don't need to retry all of them across the different subdirectories. So is it perfect? No. 
Is it the worst? Also no, it's somewhere in the middle. Um, one of the really nice ones, and again, as an analytics engineer, I want my data analyst to be able to operate in DBT, not have to worry about airflow. Uh, they don't need that, they maybe don't have that skill set, maybe it's too complex, maybe we don't want them to have access to that. They can add a new source system to DBT and it automatically gets picked up by Airflow as a new task. No addition to Airflow. Uh, so super self-serve. We have an efficient use of Kubernetes resources, similar to the other one, not the best, but okay. We do align with DBT best practices. And this is really nice, because when you're talking to your manager or you're talking to your client, if you're a consultant, you're trying to get them to change how they do their job. And one of the things they will question you on is, why are you doing this? Why are we doing this? Because to me, this doesn't sound good. If you can point to literally to the documentation of the vendor you're using, this is quite nice. This really backs up your argument. Now, do we have downsides? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the downsides is, although we're generating these tasks dynamically, we don't know what task will exist until runtime. This means we can't put a downstream dependency on any particular task that is dynamically generated. So for example, if I have my Stripe staging task, I can't have a downstream task that relies on that individually dynamically generated task. I have to rely on all of the dynamically generated tasks succeeding. So sometimes that's great, sometimes that's not. So again, the, the previous example, if the Stripe API has an outage and the task fails, even though Google Ads and Google Analytics tasks succeeded, my intermediate layer won't run. So again, not perfect, uh, but it's okay, uh, depending on your use case. Uh, index mapping, like I said, leads to unclear names. Uh, we've talked a lot here over the last two days about open source contributions. There is an open and actively developing PR on this for the last number of months. So uh, shout out to Vincent on this. I've been following this more or less since it started. Um, he's getting a lot of feedback uh, and input from a couple of the reviewers mentioned here and a few other people. Looking forward to this being implemented. This means when your tasks are dynamically generated, your UI will actually show a display name of your choosing. Uh, so no more zero, one, and two clicking about. This is going to be just a big quality of life improvement. So yeah, looking forward to this. So conclusion, I don't really like using words, so I'm going to use pictures. So uh, are dynamically generated tasks the one and only way to run DBT? Absolutely not. Uh, it doesn't work like that. Uh, as someone developing Airflow, maybe managing it as a platform, doing your own thing, it's more of a Swiss army here. So you want multiple tools in your toolkit, this is another one. So have a look at Cosmos. It's getting better, it's being actively developed. Have a look at any of the other presentations you've seen on this topic, other ways of uh, other companies doing this. The biggest advice, talk to your end users. Maybe this is something that they want once you explain it and give the pros and the cons. Maybe it's something they actively do not want. Um, if you're head down stuck in the airflow code, you won't know, so get out there and talk to them. The, the biggest thing is knowing the options you have, being able to do maybe a POC, and then trying to figure all of that out. So on that note, uh, thank you. There is the QR code again for anyone that wants to view the code snippet. Hopefully it doesn't break any of your phones or laptops like it did to the screen. Um, and with that, over to questions. Yes, questions in the room. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, I, it was not clear to me why you mentioned that this new approach using dynamic task mapping has better uh, Kubernetes resource um, allocation. Uh, to me, it seems like you're still deploying multiple tasks, and therefore, if you're using I don't know, Kubernetes executor, for example, it, it is still deploying them as individual pods. So uh, what is the difference between that and the initial approach of like just deploying multiple tasks? Yeah, perfect. So if you have individual tasks, so the Cosmos approach, that means one DBT model equals one Kubernetes pod. That also means one DBT model equals one Airflow worker slot. If you use, let's just say, the dynamic task approach here, you have one pod, one Airflow slot 
for one directory and you have multiple dbt models inside in that directory so if we go with the first approach staging had i'm going to make up the number it had 12 models that's 12 pods 12 worker slots whereas which the dynamic task you only have three tasks so you now have three pods three worker slots so you have less use of Kubernetes resources. So if you have a really large Kubernetes instance and you have some congestion going on, this may be favorable. Maybe DBT is the only thing you orchestrate and you're happy to have all of this resource. Uh, again, up to you. Question for you on the dynamic task. What happens if you have, let's say, thousands? Like I realize in your example, it's not realistic, but just as someone who's used it, like what happens when you have thousands? It gets slow. Uh, very simple. So it gets slow in two ways. So one, the UI doesn't really cope very well at scale. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to generate a DAG with that many tasks. Uh, for, have fun. Tr try and zoom out and get them all on the screen. Um, yeah, maybe you'll get uh, a screen like I got there. Um, the second thing is, you can't like Airflow can't run that many tasks at the same time unless you have a huge number of worker slots available. So you can increase the number, the concurrency via Airflow config or uh, environment available, unless you have the underlying resources available for all of those slots to be open at the same time, you're just going to be waiting because it can only run a set number of them at the same time. So technically possible, yes. Usable, no, pro probably not. You probably need to rethink it slightly. So a great presentation and uh, sort of love just sort of also just the general background on, on DBT as well because sometimes it's a little bit confusing to everybody. Um, is there any, I mean, maybe just anyone else has awareness, the, the dynamic pad tax mapping and the idea that it just has a number on it is really, it'd be nice to have a, the ability, I don't know, has anyone looked at the airflow code to see if maybe it's possible to provide a name to number mapping table? Oh, there you go. Okay, that is the PR for I thought this was the PR for what you'd done. Okay. This is the one for that. So this, this is going to allow a display name for each. So I think you will end up with a mapped index and a human Oh, I'm so name. sorry. I, I thought this was the other way around. I thought this was the... No, no. Oh, Vincent's <laughs> working on it. Vincent, if you're out there, keep going. Oh, okay. So we just need... So everyone, everyone email Vincent. Say we need it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. It only has one thumbs up, and that's me. So uh, please, please give it a thumbs up. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, this is how people up. decide on priority. So yeah. Uh, Thumbs up, please. I will check tomorrow, uh, see if everyone did it. All right. Uh, if you do think of a question later, find Pork around. Uh, but otherwise, let's give him a round of applause. Thank you.